Welcome to the Grace Filled Plate channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about Christian women and weight loss. So, have you ever heard yourself or someone else say that they wanted to lose weight to feel better about themselves? It kind of makes sense, right? And it will often be the thing that we say if we don't want to be too weight loss oriented, right? We don't necessarily want to lose weight to be hot or sexy, but we want to lose weight to feel good about ourselves. And that feels like it's okay. Well, I want to challenge that idea a little bit, and I'm challenging it for you and for me too, because this is a thought process that I often get caught up in myself. I want to feel good about myself. And the way that I want to do that is by losing weight. But wait a minute, <laughs> who says weight loss is equated with being valuable or being worthy of love? It's definitely not God. Nowhere in the Bible does it say thou shalt be a size two or a size six or even a size 10. Nowhere in the Bible does it say thou shalt exercise 60 minutes a week and keep thy heart rate at 140. No, these are great tools that we might know a certain amount of exercise or a certain type of food can help us be healthy and fit for service, but yet we can't measure our worth, our value, or our competency based on these things. Losing weight is not to be the reason that a Christian person would feel good about herself, right? You are a Jesus girl. You are a child of God. Your value is found not in your size or your shape, a number on the scale, but in the fact that God sent his only son to die on the cross for you. To feel good about yourself is more about a heart state than an external appearance. What is going on in your heart that would allow you to feel worthy of love? Now, the second question is, where are you seeking that love from? Right, if we're waiting for admiration and for a stamp of approval from the world around us, we are never gonna get there. No matter how perfect your body is, right, you're gonna be too thin or too fat or too this, your hair is too this, your, your lips are too that. People are always going to find something to criticize. And to chase that is to chase uh, like a dog chasing its tail. It's just never going to reach the benefit that we're hoping to find. So we want to examine what are we using as our measurement for feeling good about ourselves. And this points to the fact that maybe sometimes the way to feel better about yourself is to address the behavior around the eating and the food than it is to change the outcome, which is your shape and size. How much better do you feel after you make a God glorifying food choice? It is 2 p.m. in the afternoon and you're tired. <laughs> in fact, you're exhausted, right? You've been up since dark 30 a.m. and man, it feels like it's 6 p.m. around here and you could use a little boost. A little bit of sugar and you know that there's some cookies or ice cream or whatever it may be in your refrigerator or on the counter but you know in your heart of hearts that that's not what's best for you ice cream cone eaten with your family on a Sunday afternoon is enjoyable and it's an experience that you want to partake in but scraping ice cream out of the top of the container and shutting it and opening it and pulling it out again and shutting it and opening and scraping a little bit more, that's not really glorifying God. And so when you decide to pass on a behavior simply because it's not glorifying to God versus it's gonna make me gain weight or it's going to make me lose weight, there you begin to find peace within yourself. There becomes less of a critical spirit about yourself when we're focused on the Lord and doing things to honor Him. The extra bit of weight, sure, it may be bothersome and we may get caught up in, you know, walking through the mall and seeing all these billboards of super skinny models and we may feel poorly about ourselves for a little bit, but we can pull ourselves back to the thing that matters the most, which is our faith and what God said about us. And so in, let's see, we got here, 1 Corinthians 1.31, it says, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Our boasting is not to be about our size and shape, how well I ate. I, I used to walk through the grocery store with a cart full of like, vegetables and fat-free yogurt and feel so prideful and proud that I wish that everybody was looking at me to see what great healthy choices I made. As I put things on the 
the belt at the grocery store, I thought, well, goodness, maybe the person behind me with the Twinkies and the Ho-Hos will think I am superior. Maybe the person checking me out will comment about how healthy my choices are. Me, me, me. I'm boasting in myself. But what I need to do is to boast in the Lord. God, thank you for providing me with the desire to eat healthy food. Thank you that these choices do not define me. That therefore eating something unhealthy occasionally does not mean that I'm a bad person. <laughs> it's just life, right? Let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. It's not in your completion of a 5K that is where we boast. It is in the fact that you push through the hard things and you did it for God. And he saw you there. You talked to him while you were running. Right? It's a completely different focus and it's a completely different outcome. Here we got Luke 10, 20. However, do not rejoice that the Spirit submits you. So this is when the disciples were out and Jesus had sent them out and they were like casting demons out and all kinds of crazy cool miracles were happening. happening. And they came back and he said, don't rejoice that the Spirit submits you, but rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. It's not, yay, I've lost weight. Now I've made it to where I can be happy. It's, wow. I'm going to boast in the fact that I have salvation, regardless of my size and my shape. Now, is this intended to make you want to feel bad about losing weight or looking good? No, I think, I think that's something God has put within us. But when our happiness hinges upon uh, our ach achieving that or not achieving it, that's when it becomes a problem. When we're holding it up like that carrot, that if we can just get there, if I can just lose this weight, if I can just do this, if I can just do that, then I will be happy. We're idolizing the outcome and it's never gonna lead to what we're hoping for. So what do we do with this? What do we do as a Christian woman who wants to lose weight and wants to be attractive, but yet she wants to glorify God? We just submit to God. We say, Lord, this is my heart, this is my desire. But what do you think about it? What is important to you? We examine if we're idolizing the outcome or the food, right? Because sometimes when we go on a diet or restrict food, we can start to idolize the food in a way because it's been kept off limits. So we, we take it to the Lord, we examine our hearts and see what's really going on. And then we submit to him. All right, Heavenly Father, how can I do this in a way that's going to glorify you? And he will give you ideas. And let me tell you, the coolest thing ever is that eating in a way that glorifies God looks a lot like a diet. Yeah, it actually does. <laughs> because if you're eating in a way that honors who he is and who, what he has done for your life, you're probably going to eat with self-control. You're probably going to eat mostly nourishing foods most of the time, right? But you're probably going to go out to an event with your family or a celebration and have a piece of wedding cake because that glorifies God. There's balance and peace found within that continuum. So don't feel like you're giving up your goals by putting God first. Actually, you're going to achieve them in a much more sustainable way. But the really cool thing, and the reason why I think the enemy keeps us away from us, is that your testimony is going to be one that points people up. Because when you lose weight and you get healthy, what do people ask? Oh, how did you do it? Tell me all about it. Well, my sister, when they ask, we are going to tell them. It was all him. I saw the Lord and he answered me. He pulled me out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock. That is the ultimate testimony that we can share. So you wanna look better? Great. Let's reflect the light of our savior and draw others unto him. What do you think? How could you apply this to your life? Do you see an application to what you do on a daily basis to your motives? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. But first things, keep an eye out for condemnation, which makes you feel really yucky and want to run away like a dog with a tail between its legs. And listen for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'll be honest, the conviction, it stings a little bit or a lot sometimes. But it is followed by peace and joy as we know that we are locking arms with the Holy Spirit to do something really powerful for God. All right, let me just finish with a prayer here for you. So Lord, I lift up my sister in Christ to you. God, her desire is to please you before the world, Lord. But God, we are so steeped in this world. 
it is hard to know which way is which sometimes. What are our thoughts? What are the flesh's thoughts? What are the world's thoughts? I pray that God, you become the plumb line in our lives that helps us to determine what it is that we seek and what it is that we desire, Father. Show us your will for our lives. I pray for the woman listening to this today, God, that you will give her a concrete step that she can start taking today in order to glorify you in her eating and therefore probably feel a whole lot better about herself too. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks for being a part of my channel. I'll see you again.